Dan, one of the pleasures we have is we occasionally get to fly some of these airplanes. You had that pleasure. How are you feeling about it? Well, you know, this is a pretty interesting airplane. It has grabbed a lot of attention at every show we've seen it at. And some of that is because of its features. It has folding by wings and so forth, which you just don't see very often. This is intended to be an aerobatic aircraft. Uh, I don't know that it was designed for that, but it's certainly capable of that. And when they install a Lycoming engine in it later on, it'll definitely be capable of aerobatic flight. In fact, it's capable of that now. It's just that the Rotax engine folks don't want their air engines used that way. So they'll be making that change. But meanwhile, we got to explore some of its capabilities. This is an airplane that's got four ailerons on it. All, every, each wing has got ailerons, and it has some dashing roll rate. Uh, I didn't evaluate it as much as they did, but they have done a 60 degree to 60 degree roll. I normally do 45 to 45 roll, and when I do those in an airplane, I would consider fast rolling. That number is usually about three, three and a half seconds, something like that. That's a pretty quick roll rate. This one does 60 degrees to 60 degrees in just over one second. So that gives you an idea. When I was flying with Mike Hansen yesterday, and he was demonstrating some of it, and he really put the stick over hard, you actually almost go a little bit negative. It's that acceleration, and it's in roll in and roll out. Very nice. So, okay, the thing will fly along, and it'll just roll like crazy, but that also would kind of suggest that mm, maybe when it's flying along, then it's going to be a little unsteady or kind of twitchy on the stick, and it's not at all. You can take your hands off, and it just tracks straight as nice. It's a very reasonable aircraft to use for cross-country, even while it has great aerobatic capabilities. That was pretty interesting to find out. In, it's much more uh, accelerating in its roll rates, roll in and roll out, than it is in pitch. The pitch action on the aircraft is quite uh, dampened, and if anything, maybe the rudders are a little less potent than they could be. There's plenty of rudder there, but if you really want to check, the harmony is great, but if you really want to use the maximum extremes, uh, you may not get as much rudder out of it as you'd really like to get out of it. But that's a minor complaint in an airplane that flies exceedingly well. Now, I sat up here in the front of the two tandem cockpits, and so in any biplane, the visibility is going to be a little bit restricted because you've got, you've got structure around you. Uh, it wasn't so much visibility restricted that it would be any problem whatsoever, but you have to compare that to the back seat now where the canopy is slid back, but it's right over the rear seat, and from back there you can clearly see up and around and everywhere, and that's where you would fly it solo is from the aft seat. So you'd have fantastic uh, uh, visibility in a biplane, which is not so common. You have a terrific roll rate which is very exciting for doing aerobatics as uh, these talented airline driver guys will be doing later on. And you've got a nice comfortable cockpit in an airplane that feels solid as a rock. We also checked out some of its stall characteristics because you'd think, well, it's kind of a small and short airplane and maybe its stall would be a little radical. Uh, Mike demonstrated a complete power off stall, not engine shutdown, but a power of all the way back to idle thrust stall and brought it up pretty steeply. It tends to fall a little bit to one side, but quickly recovers from that, and the stall was not at all what I would call exciting. I did one with a little bit of power in it, and it just wasn't a problem that way. It, it, the airplane nose came up nicely, and it dropped down, recovered easily without any power at all. I also checked the uh, longitudinal stability of it. That is, you pull the stick back a little bit and relax. And uh, the idea is that it should go through what's so called some uh, amplitude changes, or the nose comes up and down a little bit and it should, those should dampen pretty quickly. Maybe no more than about three up and down would be an acceptable performance. This one pretty much stopped and came back to level in maybe one and a half or two oscillations. And then you can also push the stick forward and do a little bit of that so that the nose goes down and will it come back up? An airplane that's been properly designed should return to level flight without any pilot input, and this one did. So a very exciting airplane to fly. We flew behind the Rotax 912. Uh, with all this, uh, these wings, they're not very long, but there's a lot of wing area here and it just jumps off the ground. Uh, then we came around and did some uh, flying uh, when you shot some video in the year, Dave, and uh, that, was, that worked out real well. The airplane's got a lot of capability to move back and forth relative to the uh, Cub that you were shooting out of. Cub was a little slower airplane than this one is, but biplanes aren't known for being such performers. They're known for having a lot of lift and they usually have a pretty decent roll rate, but this one's got a lot of just performance capability as well, so that was fun. Yeah, it really climbed out as well. I mean, I mean, it was no slouch when you guys put the power. Yeah, down. no, it, it really gets up and goes, and that's with the 100 horsepower Rotax. 
with 115 horsepower uh, 0233 I think it's going to be even more exciting to fly so they're planning on the injected version of that so they can be upside down enough to worry about fuel flows but then we after we got done shooting some uh, in-flight videos of it yesterday and it, uh, just exploring its uh, normal flight parameters I uh, did a lot of uh, steep turns as well and 60 degree bank turns are just no problem at all tracks around real nice and easy uh, the front seat does not have trim controls, so Mike had to adjust the trim controls from the back, but he's a very conversant pilot and was able to do that easily for me, but it really didn't need too much more. The stick pressures are very nice. This is fingertip flying easily, but not fingertip flying that you have to maintain. So now we finally come back in, and the proof of any airplane in a lot of people's minds is how well it lands. Uh, we were shooting some video, so we let Mike do the first couple of landings, and he used a full flaps on it and a three-point touchdown, which means the tail wheel and the mains at the same time. He came around and did another landing on what's called a wheel landing, just on the main gear, and then dropped down on the tail. And then I finally did one with no flaps, and uh, first time doing it, no problem at all. Now, you, got, you do have a little visibility challenge. Uh, you can't see, from the, especially from the front seat, you can't see the ground very well, so you've kind of got to feel your way down. But a, a technique that we used yesterday was watching the shadow. Gave a very easy indication of how far off you were. And the airplane has a little bit of a sink rate when you first pull the power back, but once it gets down to ground effect, all this wing area really works for you. Float it in and touch down very nicely. No problems whatsoever. Now, but this is not a new airplane to the market, though, and it's been out for a number of years, and there's a lot of them flying. Yeah, and that's mainly been in Europe. There hasn't been a proponent of it in the United States until the Hanson Air Group took over, and they're going to be making a lot more mileage with it now, but then people are attracted to it, so I think they'll sell some of these guys. So a few more things about the airplane now, sort of the human side. We talked a lot about how it flies, and it flies very nicely, and, and it's going to be a nice opportunity for people. Let's talk about somebody, a GA pilot, let's say, who had always sort of admired maybe the Pitt Special, which is an airplane that looks quite a bit like this, and I've not gotten to fly at Pitts, but I've been told by a number of pilots that that's a handful to fly. You've got to be on your game to fly at Pitts. That's not true with this. It's going to offer you most of the same kind of performance, but with much nicer characteristics, in my opinion. But, you know, with any airplane, when you focus an airplane to do certain things, you have to make some sets of compromises. That's true in any airplane, and it's not negatives about this. But I'll say that entrance to this and egress from it, getting out of the airplane, a little bit challenging. You've got a step down here that just springs in, and that's where you put your left foot first. You start out with your left foot, which seems counterintuitive. You'd think maybe you'd start with your right, but then where are you going to go? So you put your left foot in the uh, step here right away, and then the canopy opens up, swings to the side, in addition to the canopy sliding forward uh, for in-flight. And they have different configurations, too. You could put two of these sort of summer canopies on it. But the way we see it here, you would just lift the canopy up. The instruments, as you see, go up with it and for the aft seat, where most of the instrumentation and most of the controls are. Because you, if you're flying it solo, or certainly if you're going to go do aerobatics, you do it from the back. Now, instruments to the back is pretty straightforward. Entrance to the front is a little more challenging. I was able to do it, uh, but it, it was a little more effort than normal. So left foot here, right foot on the step, and then you go forward onto the other step, and you kind of slide down on the back of the seat. And frankly, that makes it sound a little easier than it was. It took a little bit of doing to get in there. And when you're in, in the front seat, if I was going to say another possible negative for some people, I don't have any claustrophobic tendencies. But when you're sitting up here, you're close to these pieces of structure you know, your head is sitting right about here under my hand, so you're close to a lot of structure. It's it, There's actually quite a bit of room inside there, and you've got quite a bit of leg room to move around, but it does feel a little tight around you, but that's what it has to be if it's going to perform the way that it is. So it's not truly a negative. So once you get back down on the ground, uh, ground handling of the airplane, ironically, Mike, who is a very talented pilot and has flown this a lot, said he's found some challenges to steer it around on the ground. It's got a very hard rubber tail wheel, and uh, it, it has gotten, by regular use on paved runways, uh, it has gotten a little bit of a flat spot on it. So it kind of bumped a little bit as we went along. That's easily changed, and they can do that. In fact, they've got more tail wheels on order. But the tail wheel on this does, first of all, it's a, it's a tail dragger, and it sits nose low or nose high while taxiing, and you've got structure around you. So you're having to do that kind of fishtailing to see where you're going. I found it to steer quite easily, and Mike was a little surprised, but maybe I just uh, already adapted to it or whatever. Uh, but the steering on it is uh, uh, it's, it's sensitive enough when you push on the rudder pedals you get some action right now it's not a long delay on the other side though is that it's not a breakaway wheel breakaway tail wheel which means the tail wheel can 
once it gets past a certain point, can go to full swivel and it can turn around literally on, on one main gear. This one doesn't do that. They may be adapting to that a little bit later on, but right now the tail wheel is not that way and it has kind of a wide turn to it. No challenge at all on a big airport like this, but if you are on a really tight little ramp, you might uh, have to plan ahead a little more to do uh, uh, to steer it into position properly. So we've had crowds of people looking this airplane over because it's pretty, it's different, it does some neat things, and it's got that aerobatic capability that most of these airplanes don't advocate. Most of the manufacturers of the airplanes don't say go out and use this for aerobatics. Here's one that does. But that means, well, is it your airplane? Yes, it might attract you, but is it really for you? For those folks that think they want to do aerobatics, here's your good choice. Uh, one of a very few in the light sport segment. But if you're not looking for that, well, then this may not be your airplane, no matter how attractive it is, because it's built for that kind of purpose. This is one of those niche airplanes that serves a certain community of people, but therefore does not serve perhaps a larger community of people. So its very strengths that it can do aerobatics, that it has the roll rate that it does and the capabilities that it does may also be its weaknesses for somebody not looking for that. So it's an airplane you've got to think about. Don't be attracted just to its dashing lines and its cool paint job and the folding wings and the other attributes that it's got. You've got to think through on this thing and go, well, is it really the airplane for me? And it may not be the airplane for you because it is aimed at a narrow group of people. So it's a niche airplane. It may not be for you. But we don't want to end on that, and we don't need to end on that because Hansen Air Group, the company that's representing this airplane from Germany in the United States, also has a full line of airplanes. And one of those other airplanes may be perfect for you. In fact, the FK9, made by the same company as this, much more docile, high wing flying, good in a flight school, good on floats. Some of those other kind of things that other pilots might like, you might want to look at that airplane. In addition to that, they uh, represent an airplane called the uh, uh, Flaming Airplane, the FP4. A uh, low wing metal airplane that's got some nice capabilities for you. So you need to go to Hanson Air Group, check out the whole line of airplanes they represent. There's something in there that you're going to love. And do you have a website address for them, Dan? Hanson Air Group is Hanson, H A N S E N, airgroup.com. And I've got pilot reports on most of these airplanes on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. And today we're reporting for aircraftreporters.tv.